Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. So, you know what you're They don't teach you this in school. They don't teach you this in church. So, you know your nationality according to the Bible. Which is what? Judah. It's just Judah. Yeah. All right? And you're from the nation of Israel. Based on the curse that he read in Deuteronomy 28 and 68, that we were sold into slavery by ships, you know who's your enemy according to the Bible? The white man. Because it said that we would get sold to them. Go to Deuteronomy 28 and 48. We're going to come back to that. Deuteronomy 28 and 48 because we don't want to say anything just out of our mindset. We want to let the Bible speak. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Uh -huh. Therefore, shall thou serve thy enemy. Remember, he talked about this. We shall serve our enemy uh -huh. all day. So in Deuteronomy 28 and 68, it said we will be sold. Right? Go back to that real quick. 28 and 68. Read. Verse 68, uh -huh. and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, uh -huh. and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. So you see that it said that we were sold to our enemies. Yes. Just to reiterate, one nigga nigga sold to Master Charles from Virginia. One nigga 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 sold to Master Pew from Louisiana. You see what I'm saying? So now you know your nation of people fit those curses. So without a shadow of a doubt, if that happened to the Israelites, or it was prophesied, and it happened to your people, you are what? You're an Israelite, right? From which tribe? From the tribe of Judah. So now you understand that Judah, the nations, our people, blacks, Hispanics, and natives, we range from different colors, being black or light skinned but still having melanin, right? Give me that song of Solomon 1 and 5 now. Read what you got. The book of Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. Uh -huh. I am black. What did he say? I am black, uh -huh. but come. You ever heard of that before? In a, in a term like, you know, just for me, or black and beautiful. You feel what I'm saying? I'm black and... What did he just say again? <laughs> I am black, but come. But comely is another word for beautiful. So even in the Bible, our people know that we were black and comely, but what happens in America? Everything is pushed white or blonde, skinny, be like a white woman, blind your hair, get football credit, perm weave, marry a white woman. We don't teach that this is beautiful anymore. Perm your hair, make it straight. Why is that? Because they know they trying to put something Give me that Proverbs 3 and 31 Let's see what the Bible says Because you knowing that you're an Israelite woman Now you have to start walking like one Your mind has to be changed to what? The laws of God Watch this, read what you got The book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 31 And if you are not the oppressor Teacher, who oppressed us? And other nations as well Arabs, Chinese, Vietnamese, we went, but look around. Who runs all the stores that sells in our neighborhood? And then they tell you, hurry up and buy, get out of my store. Then they want to beat the black woman up in the hair stores. But it's our people who's going up in there that's actually envying the oppressors. Because when we go to buy that weave, what are we looking for? We're looking to be like them with that straight, stringy hair instead of rocking that wool like he went over in the scriptures with you. Read it again, because this is a law key should read. Envy thou not the oppressor, uh -huh. and choose none of his way. You don't really see no white women walking around here with no hair wraps on like you got on. Where did you get that from? Uh, Since she was a little girl. So that's something in your spirit that's been doing that. You mind if I show you that in the scripture? I'm going to show you how your spirit is identifying with the Bible. It's, it's partly remembering. Now let me show you the law and where it really comes from. Because remember, remember all the, uh, what, what is that? The, the, the pancake mix box, Auntie Mama? She was a slave, right? You feel what I'm saying? They changed the name of it now. It's still the same company, but they changed the name. I think the Krusties or something like that. But she had on what? She had on a hair wrap. That was mockery, basically, uh, but it was also to get our people to buy that. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, and verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Here's some order that God is going on with the head 
of every man. What Paul is going over this through the mouth of Christ. Understand the spirit of Christ is talking through it. Read. And the head is not the woman. It is the man. Keisha, who's the word of the woman? The man. The man. What does America teach that today? It's flip, it's flip flop. Or it's vice versa. You know where that comes from? That comes from during the time of slavery. Willie Lynch. We, one of my brothers like to call it the silly lynch letters. But Willie Lynch wrote a letter how to keep the blacks down. Put the woman in charge. Effeminize the man. What do you see right now in today's age? Just that. Men running around in dresses. The woman leading all over social media. The woman is the strong one. The police come to the house. I don't want to talk to the man. Who do they deal with? The woman. You also have what in the family? Big mamas. Nobody's going to the grandfather for knowledge. Everybody's looking to see what big mama is going to say. That's something that's been set up. But the Bible just said what? Uh, and the head of the woman is the man. Huh? And the head of Christ is God. Huh? Every man praying or prophesying. So here comes the law. Just like it said, envy not thou oppressing. Here comes another law. Read. Having his head covered, huh? this honor of his head. So when we're reading the Bible, because it's the spirit of prophecy, a man having his head covered, this honor in his head. You understand what I'm saying? You ever seen men sit in church with hats on? They take them off. Yes. But in church, what do the woman do? Wearing big ass hats. <laughs> <laughs> they wear them big hats. My grandmother had thousands of them, but it turned into a style. You understand what I'm saying? But they didn't understand why they did it. They wear those big hats, and it is just for just for show. Since we're teaching our people, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, with the Israelites according to the Bible. Read what you got. Verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied. So you're not praying, but we're reading the scriptures of prophecy. So you're in the midst of prophecy. Read. With her head uncovered, this honor of her head. Are you married? No. So your head would be those in the church, the leaders. I want to ask you a question. Are you dishonoring your head right now while the Bible is coming out? Uh, Read it again for but every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. Are you dishonoring your head right now? No. Why? Because your head is covered. That's plain English, simple Bible. So right here, Keisha, since you've been doing this since a young age, you're keeping a law. If you were to be praying or reading the Bible with your head covered. You understand what I'm saying? Now I want to show you another law. This is like it's a little tricky because some people don't understand it. We don't get it for you. Because what does the Bible command us? Hold that. Give me that Leviticus 5 and 1. Because I want to show you something. We're here to help our people. And some people think, well, it's just close. It doesn't matter. No, it does matter. The simplest things matter with God because he has order. Already, you're pulling up your shirt and you're covering your chest. All praises to the most high, but we're going to show you something. Read what you got. The book of Leviticus, chapter 5, and verse 1. And if a son sin, and hear the voice of swearing, and is a witness, whether he has seen or known of it, if he do not own it, then he shall bear his iniquity. So if I see my brother and my sister in sin, I got to come to you and say something about it. So now, I told you you were keeping the law with having your head covered, but I got to show you something that you're not keeping as an Israelite woman, right? Because you do, you, you do believe you're an Israelite from the tribe of... Judah, right? Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, and verse 5. The woman. This for you too, bro. What's your nationality? You from here? Hispanic? Puerto Rico? Okay, this for you. You understand English? Check this out. Listen to this, man. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. So what would a woman wear today that pertains to a man? I'm going to help you out. What would a woman wear that pertains to a man? Yes. If you go to the bathroom. Pants? Wow. Pants. Because you got a zipper on them jeans, right? What you pulling out of that thing? Nothing. Nothing. So why do you have on pants? You understand what I'm saying? So a woman shouldn't be wearing pants. Supposed to be wearing dresses with that head wrap. Yes, I know this. I, I know. You see? Know. Now that dress, we're going to finish the scripture. We're going to read how that dress is. That don't mean put the freakum dress on. Because some dresses sisters be wearing that, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's like a slip, a nightgown. Finish that. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And men not supposed to be running around here in no dresses or no skirts. 
Uh, no, uh, uh, what, 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 what do you call them people? Them, them Irish people be wearing kilts. They be wearing kilts, and they say now you got grown men, which with Seattle and all other nations uh, are pushing throughout the states. You got people coming out of the closet talking about their pedophiles and men with purses on and dresses and red lipstick. That's not godly according to the Bible. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Now go to First Timothy chapter two and verse nine, because we're gonna show you this is why you continue to pull up your shirt. Because we're going to see what the Bible says and see if we can identify with this. Read what you got. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, and verse 9. And like men are also, there are women. A woman. We're dealing specifically with the women. You are in holy seed, as the brother was mentioning before. God loves you. He loves us all, blacks, Hispanics, and natives. But his woman, he made special. He put a little bit more on you. Because you are supposed to be modest, you're supposed to be pure, so when you do go to a man, you're presented as holy to that man. And y'all can be married and love each other, right? Read. And like men are also, their women are doing themselves, and modest are pure. Now, Keisha, what does modest mean? Um. Woo! Well, I don't, I don't struggle with that, but that thing is hard, it's heavy. Modest. Uh, modest, what's that? Let's, let's get it. Not to draw sexual attention. So now, exactly. So yeah, pull that thing up and close your jacket up now. Because if you walking around with your cleavage and the top of your cleavage showing, what is a man looking at him? What's in his mind? It, it, uh, sis, you're keeping it real on the streets. Nation is men leading by example. Nation 